If you are listening to this tape, you have probably already experienced a panic attack. Let me reassure you that you are not alone. It is estimated that in the United Kingdom, about one in three people will be affected by panic attacks. Some of the signs and symptoms I will describe are common to panic attacks. And whilst it is unusual for panic attacks to have a physical cause, it is always advisable to see your GP to rule this out. From time to time in our lives, we have all experienced feelings of anxiety, worry, panic. Sometimes these feelings seem to get out of hand and we experience extreme anxiety, worry and or panic attacks. These experiences are all part of the body's response to a perceived threatening situation. You may be familiar with the concept of the stress response or our fight or flight mechanism. The stress response is a primitive survival mechanism. It is an instinctive reaction for when we are in danger. It can be readily understood if we think about our ancestors who may have been faced with, say for example, a saber-toothed tiger. When faced with such a threat, our ancestors would have needed to make the decision whether they were going to stay and fight the tiger or run away. Either way, they would need extra energy to help them run or fight. That extra energy is adrenaline. As the adrenaline circulates around the body, it provides the major organs of the body with the energy needed until the threat is over. This adrenaline rush all happens within a few seconds and the energy is used up in the body by either fleeing or fighting. It is the fight or flight response that enables people to perform apparently superhuman feats of strength and stamina. So what has this got to do with panic attacks? A panic attack is simply an exaggeration of the body's normal fight or flight response. One of the things people frequently ask is why they feel the way they do, why they experience some of the following symptoms, palpitations, an increased awareness of their heartbeat, butterflies in the tummy, jelly legs, fuzzy head, dizziness, dry mouth, pains in the chest, hot or cold flushes, sweating, shaking, rapid breathing or shortness of breath, sickness. These feelings can be scary and some people feel as if they're having a heart attack and fear they may die. After a panic attack, you may find that you're left feeling physically and emotionally exhausted. Again, this is due to the stress response. Panic attacks, although very uncomfortable and distressing, are completely harmless. To reiterate, a panic attack is simply an exaggeration of the body's normal fight or flight response. As well as these physical symptoms of panic, people may also experience psychological symptoms, distressing thoughts, such as feeling they are going to collapse, that they may lose control, that they feel somehow detached from things around them. Things may feel unreal. Commonly, people think that they are seriously ill and may be going crazy. Again, it is important to recognize that many people who experience panic attacks have these or similar negative or catastrophic thoughts. When the panic attack is over, these thoughts may seem embarrassing or irrational. But at the time they are very real and so strong that they may create a niggly worry at the back of the mind, which in turn can create further anxiety. It is the fear of the fear that lingers. 
for example, the fear of taking another panic attack. This feeds the anxiety and begins a vicious circle of fear feeding anxious thoughts which influence our feelings and back to the feelings of fear again, and so on. It is important to address and challenge these anxieties directly by paying attention to what we think, or to explain it in another way, being mindful of our thoughts. We will look at this a bit later on. Panic attacks can occur for many different reasons. Often people can recognize an identifiable trigger. This trigger could be a sudden shock to the system, such as an accident or hearing some terrible news. It could be a major life stress or a more steady buildup of stress. The trigger could be a physical illness, flu or virus. For some people, a particular situation may cause feelings of panic. For example, standing in a queue at a supermarket. For other people, seeing or thinking about a particular object may cause panic. For some people, there is no identifiable trigger and the panic attacks seem to come from out of nowhere. At this point, it is important for you to know that panic attacks can be controlled and although they can be scary, they are not fatal. I will repeat that. No one has ever died of a panic attack. There are several simple things you can do to gain control of your panic attacks. Firstly, and very importantly, once you have been clearly reassured by a medical practitioner that you are experiencing panic attacks and your symptoms are results of this. You then need to acknowledge and believe this. From here you can move on to help yourself and take responsibility for the way you feel physically. Just take a moment now to look at your lifestyle. By lifestyle I mean your routines the things you do day to day. Take a look at your diet. Are you happy with the type of foods you're eating? Do you feel you know what a well-balanced diet is? It is recommended that we eat five to six portions of fruit and vegetables. There are plenty of good information leaflets available in libraries, health centers and clinics that clearly outline what constitutes a good, balanced diet. Many community organisations, food cooperatives and health promotion centres offer information, advice and recipes about healthy eating on a budget. A poor diet does affect the way we feel and think. Check your caffeine intake. How many cups of coffee do you drink in a day? Remember that caffeine can be found in tea, cola and some other soft drinks. Think about trying a decaffeinated substitute. Try to drink at least eight glasses of water a day. Don't wait until you feel thirsty, as at that stage you have already started to dehydrate. While still looking at lifestyles, be honest with yourself and think about how much physical exercise you take daily. A brisk walk and a breath of fresh air is a simple, cheap and effective form of stress relief. As you continue to listen to this tape, just try to keep an open mind. After all, you have nothing to lose but your panic attacks. I talked earlier about the stress response or fight or flight. Remember that the result of this is an increase in energy circulating around your body in the form of adrenaline. This is an automatic response and is part of what is known as our autonomic nervous system. The relaxation response is also part of the autonomic nervous system. And it is important to recognize that you can't feel panic and calm at the same time. 
it's an either or. The next thing to look at doing to overcome your panic attacks is building relaxation into your daily life. Side two of this tape will help with this. Many people say that they can feel physically relaxed, but find it hard to switch off their mind chatter. A useful technique to try is just to imagine that all your thoughts are floating inside a bubble and you can just gradually let each bubble float away into the distance. No need to ignore these thoughts, just recognise they are there, then watch them float on by, without giving much attention to any one thought. Simply let them go. With all of these techniques, the key words are persistence and practice. If you do experience a minor setback, don't be disheartened. Keep going and you will overcome your panic. Remember that you can make changes that will make a difference to you. Many people when they experience a panic attack, notice that their breathing rate increases and becomes shallow. They may over breathe or hyperventilate. Two common signs of chronic hyperventilation are excessive yawning or sighing. Overbreathing causes more carbon dioxide to be released from the body than usual. And this lowering of carbon dioxide can in itself result in panicky feelings. One quick way to remedy this is whenever you experience signs of panic, just close your mouth. By doing this, you will automatically adjust your breathing to a deeper, more relaxed breath. Breathing in and out through your nose. It is important to practice correct breathing exercises on a daily basis, so that you can be certain that your body is learning to breathe properly, in a relaxed rather than stressed manner. To help you with this, here are a couple of techniques to try. Take a nice, deep breath in through your nose. If you can, and if that's comfortable, and as you breathe in, imagine your stomach expanding and filling out. Hold for the count of four, then breathe out slowly and completely. Here's another one to try. This time, completely ignore your upper body, nose, mouth, lungs, and just imagine that you are breathing in and out through your toes. And just take a moment now just to try that. Now, let's look at your thoughts. As I mentioned earlier, it is easy to get caught up in unhelpful thinking patterns. One of the most important things to do is to learn to become aware of what you are thinking about. Are your thoughts predominantly positive and supportive, or negative and unhelpful? What kind of words do you use when you are talking to yourself and describing your panic? Do you use the more negative words such as never and can't? Or do you use more optimistic terms such as I can overcome these panic attacks? One thing you can be certain about is that whatever you say, you will feel and believe. So begin from today to pay attention or be mindful about what you say. Using a mindful technique not only highlights our anxious thoughts, but we can also learn to be more aware of other unhelpful, confidence-draining thoughts and beliefs we may hold. Why don't you try writing down a few positive thoughts on post-it stickers and placing them around your house as reminders? Practice reminding yourself that the feelings of panic are as a result of the fight-or-flight response and that you are safe both physically and emotionally. 
Also remind yourself that these feelings will pass and you can stand your ground. No need to run away. Some people notice that if they find something to focus on other than the panic, then the anxious feelings subside more rapidly. You could try focusing on an object, counting or a combination of these. Focus on an object in your environment and count them. For example, lampposts or cars. You could also try imagining yourself in a lovely, relaxing place or situation. You will find what works for you, so don't give up. Keep trying. It is important that you can begin to feel in charge of your feelings of panic. Now let me just recap on the main points. A panic attack is simply an exaggeration of the body's normal fight or flight response. You can make positive steps to overcome panic. Keep an open mind. Practice relaxation and breathing techniques daily. Practice mindfulness. Decide whether you need to make any lifestyle changes. Take time out for you and do the things that you enjoy doing. And finally, most importantly, just go for it.